this third episode, we will be getting into space with the contract Escape the Atmosphere. But, as we'll soon discover, getting into space and staying in space are two very different things. This mission will have us building our first multi-stage rocket, giving us some additional ideas to explore. One of those ideas will have us taking a close look at the Delta V tools window, which will help us predict the behavior of our rocket regardless of its altitude. Very useful now that we are going into space. And finally, we'll be looking at steering your vessel using the nav ball rather than the camera view, a habit you will need to form for consistent flying. Also, with two missions behind us, we now have enough funds to consider upgrading our first building. But which one would be a good first choice? With all that, let's get started. I've already selected the contract, so it is underneath the active tab here. We'll click on it. We'll make sh always check the details on these things, even when you think they're really simple. You don't want to end up missing anything. So under the objectives, it says, Breach the atmosphere by flying a vessel to an altitude of 70,000 meters to achieve this goal. That's it. So 70,000 meters or 70 kilometers is the boundary in Kerbal Space Program between the atmosphere and space. So once you're above 70 kilometers, you are in space. You don't have to stay there. You just have to get there. That's the whole thing. Uh, there are our rewards for achieving this goal. There are our rewards for finishing off this particular contract. So let's get going with that. But before I jump into the VAB and start building, well, one of the things that uh, you need to manage in this are your buildings themselves. All, this is, all of these buildings here are Tier 1 buildings, and we've now accumulated a fair amount of funds, 136,000 curb bucks. I think it's time for us to upgrade a building. There are a couple of good choices, but I'm going to go with the Astronaut Complex. The Astronaut Complex also only costs 75,000 curb bucks to upgrade. Um, right now I can have a maximum of five Kerbals. That's not really what I'm worried about. Kerbals can only disembark on Kerbin, and that means on its surface. But if I upgrade it, my Kerbals can perform EVAs anywhere. And my Kerbals on EVA can plant flags. It's that second one I really want, right? Because if I get a Kerbal up in space, I can do an EVA report up there. Also, I can start collecting the science, storing it away so I can reuse those experiments again. Uh, getting your Kerbals to EVA is always one of the things you want to shoot for fairly early. So I'm going to grab that one instead of the mission control. So, cool. All right. We uh, now have a Tier 2 astronaut complex. Let's start building. And we're going to see some new parts here. I did go and upgrade some things, but as far as capsules go, the only one I still have is the Mark 1 command pod. So nothing else to start with, but with that, uh, actually, and something I neglected to do last time, but I might as well mention it now because it's useful is if I right click on here, I have various properties of the command pod. But if we scroll down, we have bars that we can adjust, right? This is the amount of electric charge. There's no reason why you wouldn't ever want to start with more than full electric charge. But right down here on the bottom is monopropellant. Monopropellant is used to, uh, as propellant for RCS systems and a few other things. But mostly for the RCS system, we do not have RCS yet. So why don't we just remove that monopropellant? A nice habit to get into if you don't plan on using it, and that saves me a little bit of money, but more importantly, it saves me some weight. Lifting up lighter things is easier than lifting up heavier things. So I'm going to take out the monopod. While I'm here as well, something I also haven't been doing is you can, on many parts, change textures up if you want to play with that, and in no way affects the function of the part, but you can personalize things just a little bit. Okay. As always with planning missions, you want to think backwards. What's the last thing you're going to do on the mission? We're going to land back on the surface, and that immediately gets me to thinking about parachute. I do have some other types of parachutes, but for this mission, the old Mark 16 parachute from last time is going to work perfectly fine. The other thing I want to do is start thinking about science, and I want to collect science in a lot of different places. If I go to this tab here called Payload, I now have a payload part called the Service Bay. And I'm going to put that right underneath my capsule, and we're going to open this up. And what it is, is just basically a 
place you can stow stuff away. It's really, really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stow inside there all of my science parts. So let's get started with that. I'm going to click on science. I have two new science parts. I have the two hot thermometer and I have the press mat barometer. Now, if I right click on these and take a look at their, the press mat barometer is rerunnable as is the too hot thermometer so I only need one and if I collect the data out of it after doing an experiment I can reuse that as many times as I want the mystery goo remember is not rerunnable so if I want to have more than one mystery goo experiment being performed then I'm going to need more than one mystery goo unless I put on a scientist who can reset it but I'm not going to do that because again I want a pilot I only, if I'm only gonna have one crew member I'm gonna put in that pilot so Let's think about this. How many places am I going to want to do a mystery goo? Well, I've already done one on the launch pad. In fact, I've done two. I did one flying above uh, the shores. I could do another one, but I'm not going to. Once you get above 18 kilometers, you move from the lower atmosphere to the higher atmosphere, and that is a new situation. And I can do a fresh new mystery goo at that point, collecting fresh science. So I'm definitely gonna wanna do one in the upper atmosphere above 18 kilometers. Once I'm above 70 kilometers, I will be in space. So I wanna do a second one there. Also, if I land somewhere other than the water and I'm on the shore, I can do a, another mystery goo from that new location, that new biome. To the west of the KSC is a wide span of grasslands that's very easy to land into. I'm gonna aim for that. So I'm gonna want three mystery goo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Zoom in here on the the uh, service bay, and we're going to use the W A S D and Q and E keys to eventually rotate this the way I want. There it is, and we can stick this in here. Oh, I'm going to put it right around the middle here somewhere, right about there, and then I'm going to put in two more, and we're going to go like this, like this, and eventually, I will guess the right way. <laughs> I'm always finding this hard to get. There we go. And then I'm going to hit the X key to create two of them. And we're going to shift them around. Yeah, about here I think is pretty good. That works. That works sort of. That works well for me. Okay. So now I got my three mystery goos. Then I'm going to put in only one thermometer and one barometer. With the barometer and the thermometer, you only need one because you can run them as many times as long as you can get a Kerbal to get them out. Actually, speaking of Kerbals to get them out, what I'm going to take or get the experiments out. Well, I'm going to take this, I'm going to grab the whole thing, press E to rotate it, and now all of this equipment is readily available from the hatch, which will make things easier once we're doing the mission. I'm going to show you a couple of new tools here as well. If we, We've been using this place tool all the time, but right beside it is this tool called the move tool. If I click on that and then click on a part, I get this little uh, set of arrows so that I can move that part around. And if I go down to the bottom left here, there's this toggle the snap. Right now the snap is toggled on so that the parts snap to particular locations. If I take that, the parts can slide around smoothly. I'm gonna take off the snap and then I'm going to just slide that piece back because I just noticed it was sort of clipping. I don't want it to come out the other side, nope. But I noticed it was clipping those parts. I can click on the thermometer, slide it back, or a barometer, that's the barometer and the thermometer slide it back a little bit nice and then that way I can make sure that these can all still fit neatly and tightly into there now next piece I want well this thing is gonna come in a uh, lot faster than my previous vessel did and if I go under the thermal tab I now have well radiators which really well it'll be a long time before we're talking and needing this but we have heat shields we have them in two sizes the 0.625 meter size which is a small one and the 1.25 meter size which is the size that fits under this so I'm gonna put a uh, heat shield underneath that like that and then if I go to the coupling tab I now have some decouplers I have a TT-38 radial decoupler, but the one I want is the TD-12 decoupler. This is the stack decoupler. I'm going to put that under there. So that way, when I'm attaching my tanks and engines, I'll be able to separate this whole mass. Now I've got my science all set up in here. I've got my capsule all set up and ready to go. 
I've got to think about getting this thing up. So let's take a look at the engines tab. And I do have some new engines here. Before we used to have just the RT-5 Flea, that's a solid fuel booster. I have another solid fuel booster, the RT-10 Hammer, which is just this one times two. It's just twice as big as it. But I also have this one, the LV-T45 Swivel. Now the Swivel engine is not an SRB. It is a liquid fuel engine, but I'm gonna save that for the next video. I, I wanna keep things really simple with this, so I'm gonna go with the RT-10 Hammer Booster. We're gonna slap that underneath there. All right, so here we have a rocket, not too dissimilar from the rocket we've had in the past. Remember to take a look at your center of mass overlay and the aerodynamic overlay. We want this to be below this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting on some fins. I know this, by the way, if you got into the upper part of the atmosphere with this vehicle or in space, the fins don't do anything anymore. But I do know with this rocket that it will still be in the lower part of the atmosphere by the time this engages. Um, I want I want to have the fins. I want to look at this kind of arrangement with the center of lifts. Now, I know that this thing won't be able to get into space. It won't be able to achieve that 70 kilometer altitude. What I need is another stage under this. So I'm going to get another decoupler. And I'm going to simply get another hammer. Whoops, right here. And there is a second hammer now underneath that. And I know these two combined is enough to get this up into space. Notice that the center of lift again is really, really high because uh, now I, I could bring these fins down, but then that'll mess up the upper stage part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a second set of fins. I have now locked not just the basic fin. I can use the basic fin. And in fact, instead of maybe just three of them, I can go with six. Actually, that's not bad. You know, I might just go with that. I could go with six of those, right? The more you put, we start to see the more I affect that center of lift. I think I'm going to go with six of these. I think I think that might look a little bit better. The other option is to get the bigger AV-T1 winglets. Uh, they're just bigger and they will affect the center of lift even further. I think I'm pretty good with this. They're a lot lighter. I, I think I like this. I like the scale. I think I think this is what I'm going to go for. Again, center of lift or center of drag well below the center of mass. That's what I want. Let's turn that and that off. I think I'm looking at a rocket that actually is probably going to work for me. Let's go check our staging. We always want to check our staging. So we're going to first launch on this guy. Then we're going to deactivate this decoupler, the middle one here. And then we want to do that one. What's actually a really nice idea is to do both of those at the same time so that this engine will fire at the same time that that decoupler goes, which we'll is drag them into the same spot. Then we're going to want to detach that capsule at some point, and we're going to want to deploy our parachute for the very last thing. So this is a sensible staging diagram. Okay, next thing, well, thrust to weight ratios. We talked about this last episode. Let's take a look at the thrust to weight ratio of this bottom rocket. It is 2.30. Um, that's still quite a lot of thrust. In fact, I could probably get away with putting a third of these SRBs down here on the bottom if I want to keep going, but I know this is enough. I'm going to keep it simple. If you want to try that, knock yourself out. But I do know that a thrust to weight around 1.35 or so is a more calmer launch. So I'm going to bring down the thrust limiter on this bottom stage. 57.5. <laughs> All right, let's go with 1.32, I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, now get rid of this. We're gonna want to adjust this one in a second as well, but before I get to that, I wanna go and start taking a look at one of the buttons that's down here at the bottom. There's all kinds of them that are useful, but I'm looking at this one with the little triangle and the V on it. The triangle is actually the Greek letter Delta. We're gonna spend a lot of time in future episodes talking about Delta V, but right now I just wanna click on that. And I want to draw attention to these three buttons up here. Uh, sea level, added altitude, and vacuum. Actually, I might as well draw attention to the top one here, body. You can change your body to any other body in the game. But we're going to stick with Kerbin, obviously. But looking at these tabs here, 
Right now it's on sea level, so what it's doing is it's giving me this data down here at the bottom right based on the assumption that the rocket is at sea level. That's great because this rocket will be starting at sea level and I want a launch thrust to weight in around 1.32. But if I change it to say vacuum, let's go over to the very, very far one. Now it's showing what the numbers are in a vacuum. And I want you to notice that these numbers have changed. Now this has a thrust to weight ratio of 1.52, it's more. All rocket engines perform better in a vacuum than they do at sea level. The thinner the air, the better a rocket performs. And for some rocket engines, the difference is quite dramatic. So you do want to pay attention to, you know, what's the situation you're going to be having that engine working in? Is it going to be at sea level? Or is it going to be at a vacuum? Or is it going to be at some altitude in between? If you click on altitude, you have a bar that you can adjust. So if I can adjust this, oh, maybe I'm at nine kilometers and I can look at what my numbers are, or I can look at 13 kilometers, that sort of thing. The thing I want you to notice is, remember in a vacuum, it was 1.52. Uh, it doesn't take long before I'm at around 1.52. Once you get in around 18 kilometers or so and you're making that transition from the lower atmosphere into the higher atmosphere, for the performance of most rockets, you're pretty darn close to a vacuum. The atmosphere is thin enough. So I actually rarely use the altitude button. I'm usually flipping in between the sea level and the vacuum. Okay, now let's take a look at this top motor, which is actually the second stage here. It has a thrust to weight ratio of 3.96 at sea level and 4.54 at vacuum. That is huge. In fact, it might be destructively huge because as this thing drains fuel, it's gonna get lighter and this thrust to weight ratio is gonna just keep going up and up and up and up. I would like that to be more in around the two range. I'm gonna keep this at vacuum because I know by then I'll be into the higher up in the atmosphere. I don't know quite how high. 2.02, that seems fine. The thrust to weight of the bottom stage is going to be increasing as the rocket loses weight from fuel loss as well to might make a nice comfortable transition between the first stage and the second stage. That's all I'm thinking about. And also I don't want it to be going so fast when it's in the upper, upper atmosphere that I'm going to get myself into trouble. But I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. To be honest, I think I am seeing something that I think is going to work pretty well for me. And here we are all ready to go. We do have some science to do, so let's do that really quickly. All of it is inside this service space, so we're gonna open up the doors. Remember the mystery goos here are saved for the upper atmosphere for space and for when we're landed back on the grasslands. Same with the crew report and same with Valentina's EVA. There's no point doing those right now because we've already done EVA reports and crew reports on the launch pad. But this is new science. We have the press map barometer. Let's log a pressure scan, 3.6 science there. We have a temperature scan. We have 2.4 science there. And we should collect those so we can be ready to do them again. So we're gonna EVA Valentina. And this is the whole reason why I rotated the service bay because this is now within easy access of her. Just make sure you hang on there, Valentina. We're gonna take that data. We're gonna take the data from the thermometer. And then we're just gonna board once again so the data is stored inside the capsule. These are all ready to be run once again. And since we're next time we run them, we're gonna be flying in the atmosphere. I'm gonna take these menus and I'm gonna pin them over here to the side so they're easy to access. I'm also gonna grab one of these mystery goose. And then I'm gonna close these doors. Uh, the doors do affect the aerodynamics of the rocket. In fact, they affect it quite a lot. So uh, don't forget to close your doors if you're gonna be flying through the atmosphere, especially the lower part of the atmosphere. Uh, they make a big difference. Okay, otherwise this thing is ready to go. So I'm gonna put on my SAS by hitting T and we're just gonna hit spacebar and we're off. And really my goal right now is just to go straight up. And if you're having trouble with your controls, by the way, with your rocket, chances are you're probably looking at the rocket here and using your controls, like this is where your eyes are. This is not where your eyes should be. Your eyes should be down here. Look at your nav ball while you're steering. Um, where the camera is does not affect the control scheme at all. I'm trying to still just go straight up and I'm pushing, it wants to kind of lean over one way. 
But right now on the nav ball, no matter how I have my camera, uh, left is D, right is A, down, no, up is S, and down is W, and that never changes. Whoop, next stage. So get used to that. Get used to um, steering using the nav ball, not watching the screen here. I do want to pitch a little bit towards the west, so I'm hitting the A key a little bit, so we can pull over that way. For the most part, that's that's about it. That should get us landing into the grasslands. I'm just going to go straight up. Uh, what's our altitude? 12 kilometers. Not yet. Remember, 18 kilometers is our boundary. At that point, we're going to be doing some spade. Maybe not want to go over quite that far. Back a little bit. Okay, 18 kilometers. Log and pressure. Logging temperature. Observing the mystery goo. And we're going to do a crew report. Those are all the science that we have available. Awesome, awesome. Ooh, we're getting some heating effects here. Good thing I turned down that thrust to weight ratio. This could be bad. Ooh, even some temperatures here. All right, we've run out of fuel. We're on our way up. If you go down here to the bottom left and click this little button down here, it says maneuver mode. Um, it does give you some data. Right here we have our apoapsis. That's the highest part of our trajectory. You can see it is at 130 kilometers. So we are well past the 70 kilometers that was necessary. So that is perfect. Oh, Valentina should do an EVA report really quick. EVA report. Uh, upper atmosphere. Excellent, Valentina. Good job. You can get back inside. Actually, why did you go back inside? We're now in space above 70 kilometers. Woo, space. So we got lots of science to collect. But of course, the first thing we got to do is collect all of the data in the equipment that was collected in the upper atmosphere. So Valentina has to EVA to do all that, get all that data stored safely into the capsule. And then we got another mystery goo to do, a pressure scan, a temperature scan, a crew report. And Valentina can also do an EVA report. And while she's out there, she'll collect all of that now in space data and we'll get back in everything's now stored safely away in here awesome okay so we're in space and you can be forgiven from watching science fiction movies and even many historical space movies if you think once you're in space well, gravity's now gone, right? We're in space this is it we're up here uh no we are not we are falling don't believe me well Take a look at our map view. Pressing M gets us into map view. We'll hit over here to turn, turn off those communication lines. Here's our trajectory, right? We're going up and we're coming right back down again. Just like anything that you would throw straight in the air, unless you threw a crazy amount of velocity behind it, it's gonna go up and then it's gonna fall down. Gravity doesn't turn off once you are out of the atmosphere. It simply doesn't work that way. So you might be asking, very understandably, well, what's the deal? How, how, how do you, I know you can get into orbit. How do you get into orbit? Well, right now we do have a little bit of velocity. Most of that is horizontal velocity. And I'll give you a hint. We need a lot more of that horizontal velocity. And we're going to talk about that a lot more in next episode when we are going to be getting ourselves in orbit. In the meantime, we should be getting ourselves ready to be re-entering the atmosphere because that's going to happen very, very soon. I'm going to put on SAS. SAS always turns off when uh, you leave the capsule. I like to turn sort of sideways a bit and then hit the space bar to get rid of this booster that pushes it off to the side so it won't end up falling on top of me. I always think that's a good idea. And then I'm going to orient the capsule onto this retrograde vector. That's the little yellow one with the X on it. That is the way backwards from the way we're going because we're going backwards right now. We are in the atmosphere, so I should close these doors definitely again. I'm gonna take off SAS because actually the narrow, natural aerodynamics will keep this thing oriented the way I want. And then I'm also gonna hit spacebar for the parachute. The parachute didn't deploy as you notice, but if you take a look at this icon, it turned a light blue color. And that's telling me that the parachute is now armed. It will deploy once it's safe to do so. It's nice to do that early so you don't forget about it later on. Otherwise, we're, we just fall. This is, this is all that's gonna happen. I can see we're gonna be coming down. Well, I think it's gonna be grasslands, not highlands. We'll see what ends up happening. Both will work for me. You can see our heat shield doing its job. Might have been able to get away without the heat shield, but you know, better safe than sorry. Okay, we're losing a lot of velocity thanks to air resistance as the air gets thicker. And then once we're slowed down to a safe velocity, 
There it goes. There goes our parachute. Nice and deployed. Okay, we're below 18 kilometers now. We can do ourselves another crew report. Uh, 3.5 science flying over the grasslands. I suspect it's now safe to open up these doors. Uh, let's see here. I want to do. I, I want to save that mystery goose. So I'm going to do a temperature scan. 5.6, and we'll do another pressure scan. 8.4 flying. Just says flying over Kerbin. See that flying at Kerbin, not grassland. So that means that actually this is it for the pressure scans for low low, low atmosphere. Oh, our parachute has now fully deployed. So we're now slowing down to a nice safe velocity. In fact, once it finishes slowing down, it's a safe enough velocity for Valentina to do an EVA and do an EVA report collecting uh, flying over Kerbin's grasslands EVA 5.6 science. Well done, Valentina. Let's get you inside. If we go up here towards the top, this is now giving us our altitude above sea level. That's what this little icon means. But if you click on that icon, it switches to terrain, which is really right now what I really want, right? I'm 50 meters above the terrain that's right below me. It's our radar altimeter. We're just about to touch. Boom, there we are. We are now down on the surface. We can do another observation of the mystery goo. And of course, we got a lot more science to collect landed here in the grasslands. Once again, Valentina is going to need to get out and repeat the process of collecting data from the experiments so that they can be run once again. And while she's doing that, let's take the opportunity to look at the main takeaways from this episode. This episode centered around building our first multi-stage rocket, which got us looking a little more deeply into the staging diagram, as well as looking at the Delta V window. Always make sure you have the correct atmosphere setting for the stage that you are working on. Checking that, along with the stability principles we learned in the previous episode, will go a long way to helping you build rockets that are easier to fly. Speaking of which, when you fly, practice looking at the nav ball when you steer your rocket. You should find this will help keep your sense of direction more consistent and get you steering more often in the direction you want. That will be drawing this episode to a close. Make sure to join us next week when we'll be putting our first Kerbal into orbit. I hope to see you then.